Hello and welcome to 6502 Binary Division. We're going to be writing a binary division, or actually I've already written it, but we're going to be going through a binary division routine um, in assembly today for the 6502. Um, so this is going to be another another video in the series. If you haven't seen the earlier ones on the op, you know, on the op codes and things, you might want to check them out. Um, for this example, this is going to be a routine that will divide any 8-bit number by any other 8-bit number and give you the result. Um, so, for instance, you know, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 100 by 9. Now, the 6502 doesn't have a division operator, so you have to do this with adding and subtracting. And so basically what you do is long division the same way you learn in grade school. So just as here, you know, you do this by saying, okay, 9 doesn't go into 1, then it goes into 10 one time, you know, and then you have to subtract and drop a number down, goes into 10 one time again, subtract again, and then you get a remainder. You do the same thing with this, except that it's binary. So what we're going to be doing is shifting this number one bit at a time so we can deal with it one digit at a time just like we did here adding another digit with each step. So this is the dividend. This is the number we're going to be dividing which in this case happens to be 100 in, by, in, in decimal. This is the divisor which is 9 the number that we end up with, the answer, is the quotient, and that's going to start out as just zero. And then when we get done, we'll also have a remainder. So those are four memory locations, four, four values in memory, four bytes in memory that we'll be working with as we go through the routine here. The dividend, the divisor, the quotient, and the remainder. Now, the, the actual work is going to be done in the accumulator because that's where you do adding and subtracting in the 6502. So, the accumulator is going to sit here. I mean, they're not physically like, you know, laid out like this, but the accumulator is where we're going to roll this number into to do the work on it. So, I think that's everything to explain as far as how this all is going to be laid out. It doesn't matter where these values are in memory, um, that can be anywhere, it's just the assembler will take care of plugging in those memory locations for when I use the, you know, use those labels. So we're going to be using two, two of the registers, two of the three registers, A and X, and then these four memory locations to do our work here. So we start out by loading A with, the, the first part of this is just getting these values set up before we actually get into the, the dividing routine. So first we load A with 6.4 in hexadecimal, which is 100 for the dividends. We load A with that, store it in the dividend location. Load A with 9, store that in the divisor location. Load A with 0, store that in the quotient location. And then A will, can, will remain 0, which is what we want when we start rolling into it. Um, so let me fill that in. So the accumulator is going to start out as zero. Okay, then we load X with eight. And the reason for that is we want to shift one digit into the accumulator each time that we check to see if we can subtract and you know, do the long division thing. So we need to shift it eight times to shift the full thing in there. And so we start out by loading X with eight. That's going to be our loop, our loop register. Then we've got a, a label for the assembler, um, which we'll be branching to later on. This is the, the start of our loop. Then we've set the we've set the index num you know we've set the index register for the loop. Now we start the loop. So the first thing we do is shift the or shift the dividend value left. So when you shift value left, you drop the you drop the top bit off into the carry flag. So the carry flag, which I'll show right over here, because we're going to be using it a lot, becomes zero. And then you pull a zero in at the right end. That's what happens when you do an arithmetic shift left in ASL. So I'm going to move this out of the way too. Be moving that. 
Okay. Then we roll the accumulator left, or rotate is the word I should say. Now when you rotate, unlike the arithmetic shift left, and I, I went into more detail about all these in my previous videos, but when you rotate, just to review, um, a rotate pulls in the carry flag at the other end. It doesn't, it doesn't just pull in at zero, it pulls in the carry flag. So we rotate the accumulator left, pull in the carry flag, and in this case we're just left with zero again. Now we compare the divisor to the accumulator. So what that does is it basically tries to do a subtraction. It says what would we get if we subtracted the divisor from, from the accumulator. Can we, do, can we subtract it? And what happens is when you're, when you're done with it, when you do that, the carry flag gets a 1 if you can and it gets a zero if you can't. In other words, it gets a zero if the divisor is larger than the accumulator. If, if, it, would, if, you would, if it would result in a negative number, the carry flag gets cleared, but basically because it needs to pull it in to do the subtraction to borrow from. If the two numbers are the same, or if the top number is more, then the carry flag get, gets set. So in this case, since this one is larger than this one up here, the carry flag gets cleared. So it doesn't actually do a subtraction, the accumulator stays the same, it just compares, which is like, you know, it's, it's, it's like it looked to see if it could subtract, basically. So the carry flag remains zero because it couldn't subtract. There wasn't, you know, the, the bottom one was bigger than the small, the, the top one. Then we push the status register onto the stack. Now the reason we do that is, basically we need to use this carry flag for two things. We've got one thing, it gets, used, one, it gets used for one thing here and one thing here. So I need to store it while I'm doing this other thing that's going to clobber it. So when we, when we push the status register on the stack, that, that's so we can, we can save that carry flag and get it back. So I'm going to have the stack over here, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to push the status register, which includes, you know, includes all the status flags, but the only one I really care about is carry is zero. I just pushed that on the stack right here. Now we're going to roll or rotate the quotient to the left. Now again, when you, ro when you rotate a value, you pull the carry flag in on the other end. So we're going to rotate it left, which drops off the top, top one into the carry flag, actually, but we don't care about that. And it pulls the carry flag in at the right end. Since it's going left, it pulls it in at the right end. In this case, it didn't change anything. That's fine. Then we pop the status register back off the stack. So we've done that, and it could have changed our carry flag. Now we want to get it back so we can check it here. So we'll pop it back off the stack, and the carry flag is zero again. Now we're going to branch if carry clear to the no SBC label. So what that means is if the carry flag is clear, if it's zero, we're going to branch ahead to here. If it's not clear, and we'll, we'll see examples of that as we go, then we just continue on. In this case, it's clear, so we're going to jump ahead to here, and then we decrement x. So x, we'll just put x right here. We started out as eight. X is now going to be zero. It's not going to be seven. We're going to decrement it by one, and then branch if not equal to d loop. Now, branch if not equal means branch if the last thing we did did not result in a zero, did not result in something equal to zero. Since this decrement resulted in a seven, that's not zero, and so we're going to branch back to d-loop. So we've done one loop through on the first digit that we had in dividend. So we're back to here. So, once again, we've got to shift the dividend left. This time, that's going to drop a 1 into the carry flag. And it's going to pull a 0 in over here. Rotate the accumulator left, which is going to drop this 0 off of here and pull in the carry flag here. So you can see how I'm shifting these digits, the digits out of the dividend. I'm shifting them one at a time into the accumulator by shifting it left and then rotating the accumulator left. Um, Okay, and that's that cleared this when I drop this, when I rotate and drop that off there. 
now we want to compare to the divisor again. Okay, so once again, we'll stack this up here and say, if we were to subtract, could we subtract? Which one is more? Well, no, we can't subtract. This is more than this. So, since we can't subtract, the carry flag is zero. Push that on the stack. I'm going to start going a little faster here, at least until I get to a, an example that flips the other way. Roll the quotient to the left. So, drop this zero off here. Pull this carry flag in here. Pop it back off the stack. So, carry flag is zero again. That didn't change, but that's fine. Branch of carry clear, which it is, to no SPC. Decrement X. X is now six. Branch if not equal. It's not equal to zero. So, branch to D loop. Okay, so we've done two loops now. Shift the dividend left again. Drops another one into the carry flag. Pulls a, pulls a zero in here. <clears throat> Rotate the accumulator left. That pulls this one in on the right end. Drops a zero off of here. Actually drops it in here. I don't care, but it does. Then we compare to the divisor again. Okay. Once again, can we subtract? We can't. This is still bigger. If, if you don't, I mean, if you don't know enough binary to know, you can, I think you can tell just by looking that, you know, this, this number has a one further left than this one. And just like if I, you know, with regular numbers, if I say which is bigger, 900 or 90, I think you can tell 900 is bigger. Same deal here. This one is bigger than this. So we can't subtract. The carry flag stays clear. Push that on the stack. Rotate the quotient. That's going to rotate a zero. Drop out a zero. Pop it, or a second. Yeah, pop it back off the stack. So still clear. We branch of carry clear to here. Decrement X. X becomes five. And branch if not equal to D loop. Okay. Shift it again. Get this out of the way. Shift it again. We're going to pull a zero in over here. Add a zero there. Rotate the accumulator. That's going to pull a zero in from the carry here. Drop one out here. Then we compare the divisor. Can we subtract? No. This is still bigger than this. Can't subtract, so the carry remains clear. Push it on the stack. Roll the quotient left. It's going to roll a zero in here. I keep saying roll, and the word is really rotate, but I guess it doesn't matter much. Pull the carry equals zero back off the stack. Branch of carry cleared and no SBC. Decrement X, X becomes four. And branch of not equal to D loop. All right. Something's got to happen here eventually. Something different's got to happen eventually at some point, right? All right, shift the dividend left again. So pull the zero in here, shift this zero off to the carry. Roll the accumulator. Roll the zero in here, shifts the zero out the other end. Compare, so can we subtract? Yes, we can. You know, like I said, even if you don't know binary, you can probably tell that 1100 zero, zero is bigger than 1001. Zero, zero, one. You know, even if this was, you know, 1100, it would be more than 1001. That's the same principle. So this compare, since, the, since we're subtracting a smaller number from a larger number, is going to result in a carry of 1. Right there. So now, get that out of the way. We've done our compare, it set the carry to 1, we push that on the stack, and now we rotate the quotient. This time, rotating it pulls a 1 in at this end. It drops a 0 off into the carry. And see, that's why we have to keep pushing the carry on the stack, because right there, that rotate clobbered our carry flag. We can't, we can't compare it then, you know, we can't check it in this BCC because it's it's gotten changed, so that's why we push it on the stack here and then get it back after this rotate. So we've done the rotate, now we pull the carry equals one back off the stack. 
And now we branch of carry clear to no SBC, but the carry is not clear, it's set. So we don't branch, we just continue. And now we set the carry, which actually I could take that line out because it, it, can't, be, it can't be unset after that line. So I can take that line out. Save me a couple of cycles, a couple of millionths of a second. Um, and then subtract with carry the divisor. So this time we're not just comparing, we're going to go ahead and subtract it. So it's just like in long division, you know, when you can subtract a value, you do. So when we subtract here, uh, um, I think that's right. I just have to stop and think quite a bit when I do binary arithmetic. So, um, 10 minus 1 is 1. That borrows from this, turns it into a 1. Borrows from this, turns it into a 0. I think that would be correct. Let me stop and think about what this is. This is 12. This is 9. Yeah, so that's 3. Okay. So when we subtract then, that value becomes the new accumulator value. Where a compare doesn't change the accumulator value, a subtract actually does. It actually replaces the value. So the accumulator now is going to be 3 after that. Alright. And then we go on like we've done before. We decrement x um, down to 3. Branch if not equal back up here. Alright. Shift the dividend left. That's going to pull a 1 into the carry flag. Pull another 0 in here. And, you know, even though this is all zeros, we still got to keep doing it because it wouldn't necessarily be. It just depends on what numbers you're working with. Um, rotate the accumulator left. That's going to pull this carry flag in here. Drop this. Compare to the divisor. All right. Can we subtract this? No. That's, too, that's bigger than that. Okay, so this is 9. This is 7. So we cannot. So the carry gets cleared by this compare. We push that to the stack, rotate the quotient, so that's going to pull this zero in, drop a zero, pull this back off the stack, carries equal zero again, branch if carry clear, it's not, uh, it is, so we branch here, we decrement x, x is two, and branch if not equal to d loop. All right, two more loops, shift the dividend, that's going to put a zero in here. I'm not going to bother rewriting it. Rotate the accumulator left. That's going to pull a zero in here. Drop a zero. Compare to the divisor. Two, three, four. Zero, zero, one. This time we can subtract. So that's going to set the carry since the compare found that this was bigger than this. It's going to set the carry flag to one. Push that to the stack. Rotate the quotient. Rotating the quotient is going to pull the carry flag in at this end, drop the top zero, the top digit there, which would drop into the carry. But we don't care because we're going to pop this right back out. So carry equals one. Branch of carry clear. It's not clear. So we continue and we subtract the divisor. So this time we, we subtract it for real. Um, zero, one, zero, I think. Let's see, that would be 14 minus 9 would be 5, yes. Okay, so we've subtracted now, so this new value becomes the accumulator value. Decrement x becomes 1. Branch if not equal, back to d loop, last the loop. Shift the dividend, brings a 0 into the carry off the top. Rotate the accumulator. Compare to the divisor. Can we subtract? Yes. Because this is um, this is 10, this is 9, so our result is going to be 1. Okay, but we haven't actually subtracted yet. We'll do that in a bit. Um, but we compare, and it, there, you can subtract, so the carry flag gets set to 1. Push that to the stack. Rotate the quotient, pulls a 1 in here, drops one, drops a 0 off of there. Pull the carry 
back off the stack, carry equals 1. Branch of carry clear, it's not clear, so we continue, we subtract the divisor, so we subtract to get 1. Decrement x, x is now 0, branch if not equal to 0, but it is equal to 0. The last thing we did made x 0, so this fails. We continue, and now we store a, we store the accumulator value, which is 1, we store that into the remainder. And we return, and we're at the end of our routine. So that's the whole deal. Um, that's the actual process that it goes through to divide one 8-bit number by another 8-bit number. There might be a way to make this so, you know, a little more efficient. I mean, we, we cut this out while I was while we were working on it. Just realized that that was uh, unnecessary. It might be possible to combine the subtraction process, the subtraction part, and the compare part somehow. Um, shorten that up, but I don't think I'm going to spend too much time trying to figure that out. So our result then, our quotient, is 8 plus 2 plus 1, which is 11, and a remainder of 1. So that's what we were shooting for. 100 divided by 9 is 11, and a remainder of 1. Um, not doing any fraction, or not doing any decimals here. That's not uh, part of this. Now, you know, this is fairly small numbers. This is, you know, you can only go up to 255 with these numbers. Um, you could go larger by basically saying, okay, the dividend is two bytes. Say we have a dividend high byte and a dividend low byte, you know, with some digits. And then, at this point, you would have to shift both of those. You know, you'd have to rotate, you know, you'd have to rotate both of them, or if you wanted to go 32 bits or 64 bits or whatever, you could go with as large numbers as you want. You would just have to rotate them along so that you keep bringing your bits. And if you wanted to do like a 32-bit version of this, you would not, you'd have to do that, plus you'd have to change this, to, you'd have to change your loop to 32 because you need to bring however many bits you're going to divide, you need to bring them all through this, through the accumulator, through this process. Now, if you wanted to go with bigger divisors, that's that gets a little more complicated, um, but you you know you can do that. I basically wanted to the, the original reason I decided to do this as my next example was I wanted a routine that I could use to divide something by ten because I want to be able to display numbers on the screen. And when you, know, you say the accumulator is sitting there with a value like one hundred in it, which is hexadecimal six four. How, you know, you can't just say put that on the screen. You've got to write a routine to put that on the screen, and so you've got to be able to get out. Okay, how do you, how do you get from this to one zero zero? Put that on the screen as one hundred. Well, to do that, you need to be able to divide by ten. Basically, is what what it comes down to. So, I thought, well, I need to be able to divide by ten. So I need a division routine, a general division routine, and then I can build on that to do the other thing I want. So that is that. Um, it's a little more complicated than the examples I was doing before just to show off the opcodes, but I don't think it's too, hopefully it's not too hard to follow um, and even a little bit useful. So I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.